But I'm happy. Nothing. Nothing's going to bring... Phone's ringing. One sec. I'm listening. I'm listening. What have they said? Because in the meeting they said to me it was all going to be okay. They've said what to you? Thank you very much for coming along to this emergency meeting. Uh, I know it's obviously quite quick to call with some of us, but we got a call at the end of last episode where the things aren't looking great for us, basically. Uh, I've got to say thank you, obviously, to Andre, to Martel, and to Joseph Cipollini, who's not at the club anymore, uh, for coming along to this emergency meeting. And, of course, the two other uh, stock photo women who are also in there as well. You'll get replaced at some point by other characters, I'm sure. But uh, for now, welcome to the meeting. Great to see you. I'll be honest with you, things aren't looking good. Um, we got a call at the end of last episode and uh, the Spanish FA, they're just not happy with us. Obviously, we are doing better than expected. Obviously, winning the league in that first season, then they stopped us getting promoted. We obviously got promoted in our second season and we're doing pretty well right now. They do not want us to succeed. They want us to fail and, well, the call threatened us with expulsion from the Spanish Football League system. If, if we don't come up with something good soon, we are no longer going to be in the Spanish Football League pyramids. Uh, Andre, any ideas? No, you never do. You never do. Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 3. Hope you're all doing well today. Looking forward to today's episode and there's plenty of things to talk about. First of all, obviously, you saw my introduction. The Spanish football authorities are not pleased with us. They uh, they don't like how we are unsettling the balance of play in Spain, how well we're doing considering we're not from Spain ourselves. Um, but we've not really heard much more from them. We've had that meeting. Um, we need to find out what to do. But because it's Christmas... There's not really much we can do right now because they're all shut up for Christmas. Obviously, Spain's a Catholic country. They love their Christmas. So there's nothing we can really do with the Spanish FA right now. Speaking of Christmas, Merry Christmas Eve, of course. If you do celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas Eve to you. If you don't celebrate Christmas, happy 24th of December. Obviously, because tomorrow is Christmas Day, uh, there won't be a video out for you. However, I am going to be streaming tomorrow. I know a lot of people out there are stuck in tier four areas in the UK where they can't travel and they can't see family. And a lot of the people that I know as well are stuck on their own over Christmas. I know around the world a lot of people are stuck in lockdowns on their own and things like that uh, and other people just might not care, not, not really bothered about Christmas but um, because a lot of people are going to be on their own, a lot of people don't really have much to do on Christmas, it's a bit of a sad Christmas for them instead. Um, I'm going to do a stream tomorrow where uh, we'll play various different games and hopefully we'll have a nice bit of time together um, to forget about the worries of Christmas if you're on your own, things like that. So 7pm UK time, I'll be going live over on twitch.tv slash tomfm. Link down in the description below if you want to come along and join the fun. So since you guys were last here for yesterday's episode, we've played a few games and for the most part done relatively well. You were last here for the draw with Melia and the 2-0 win against Racing Santander. Well since then uh, we've gone to play seven games and we We've won five of them, which is pretty good going. Starting off with a uh, Raul hat-trick in a game against a team called Orahula, which is maybe how you don't pronounce it. But again, I don't need to even do this anymore, do I? You guys know that I just can't pronounce things, so... Um that's that. Uh, we beat them 3-1. We then beat uh, Rayo Vallecano 1-0 thanks to an own goal. Again, we shouldn't have won, but we got very lucky with. Following that, we were meant to play Cordoba, who were top of the table. However, the game was called off for a waterlogged pitch, and then we had two weeks off for international break. So I thought it was probably a good idea to schedule a friendly in the middle of that to try and keep some match fitness to the players who weren't on international duty. Otherwise, they go three weeks without a game. Uh, we won that 1-5-1 against Ham Dogs from Gibraltar. And as you can see, it clearly did not work as we lost 4-0 to top of the table Cordoba and then 2-1 to Rayo Mahada Honda after that. Not so great, but we did bounce back with a 2-1 win over Badajoz and then last time out against a team called Tudelano, which is, again, probably not a say. We beat them 4-2 with Raul Jr., Crosdale getting a brace and Kike getting one right at the end. So it's not been too bad, to be fair. It's been pretty decent. We actually see ourselves fifth in the table right now after that sort of good run of form we've had on 34 points. So we're looking very, very good. Uh, we are not going to be going down this season because Real Union are on two points, uh, which is all right for us. And I'm pretty sure we're not going to be involved in that sort of relegation scrap down there. The annoying thing about this division is though, uh, only two places for promotion. Obviously, top of the table goes up and second go up as well. There's no playoff system at all. You've got to finish in the top two. And right now, we're only four points off Numanthea in second. However, 
I just don't think we're going to have the legs to get up there towards the end of the season, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Now, I've given out some new contracts to a couple of players. Uh, Jez Jezovic, if we look at uh, Jez Finley and Scott Marshall, uh, they've all signed pre-contracts starting at the end of the season to go in for the future. So they've got some contracts coming up. Uh, Onino signed a new one as well. Scipio signed a new one too, and so did someone else. I can't remember who it was though. If we sort by expired though, uh, if we look at this, if we go from Pablo Gonzalez up to Tomic, you can see there are a few players who have got contracts still to be discussed. Most importantly, Kike, Lopez and Crosdale. The annoying thing about Kike and Crosdale is they both want a lot of money, uh, an awful lot of money. And if we look at the news right now, Teller Crosdale starting to drop hints he wants to move to a bigger club and is considering leaving us so what we need to do is offer him a new contract however he's unhappy at the club so maybe i should have given him the two grand that he wanted but two grand is an awful lot of money so i thought it wasn't worth it let's wait for a little while but we want to try and keep crossdale here at the club because he is absolutely fantastic so andre shitigel please can you have a word with him and he's now happy to stay at the club so will you sign a new contract now no because let's give it a day let's give it a day and then we'll see what happens you know, maybe tomorrow he'll want to sign a new contract. Back to Crossdale, he no wants to, no longer wants to leave the club. Uh, contract, offer new contract, still, st still didn't want to sign a new one. Oh, I should, I regret not giving him that contract now. He wanted a lot of money in between episodes, but I thought it was better to just sort of leave it and he might, you know, lower his demands a little bit, but not so good. Obviously, Kike needs a new contract as well. However, uh, the past few games he's played quite well, but he has not been scoring goals particularly recently. He's on the decline a little bit at the age of 29. I'd feel really bad getting rid of him, but he also wants about two grand a week. And we can't have two strikers on four grand a week when our well, a combined four grand a week when our finances only allow for £17,000 a week for the entire team. It's just not sustainable. So one of them might have to go. As we head into today's first game though against University Mathia, this is the team we're going to go for. Anthony Ward in goal as per usual with a back line of Vasquez, Brito, Lopez and Javier. Shitigel, Gonzalez and Cipollina combined in that midfield trio with Kike, Crosdell and Raul Jr. starting up front. So as we head into this first game, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me. Uh, from Christmas cheer, dropping the likes on the video would massively appreciate that. That would be very, very kind of you all. First highlight of the game, though, is uh, Shitigel coming forward up towards Kike. Kike, go on, in the area, across the tail of Crosdale, who puts it in the back of the net. And, of course, the phone's buzzing. What can that mean? It can only mean one thing. It means that the One Football app has given us a notification to say that Lincoln have gone 1-0 up. Of course, if you've not yet downloaded the One Football app for free from the top line of the description, would massively appreciate it if you could do. It is the best footballing app out there for all the news, latest scores, live updates, um, everything like that. It's a fantastic app. I've really enjoyed using it the past few weeks. Uh, I hope you guys have as well. We have some good feedback from you as well. Uh, so if you could download it, would hugely appreciate that. But let's see if it's Crossdale goal again. It looked like he tried to chip the keeper from like five yards out, really. It didn't look very far out, and it looked like he almost missed it as well. So Kike very unselfishly puts it into Crossdale. He does try to chip it from about the penalty area, but does get it into the top corner. Nine for the season for Crossdale. Now, it's fantastic stuff. It's Raul Jr. who leads the goal-scoring tally for us. I think he's on, I want to say, 15 or so. I can't quite remember now. I know Kike's on eight. Crossdale now on nine. Uh, I'm pretty sure Raul is on about 15 or so. We'll see if he scores a goal in this game, obviously. It's Raul Jr. coming forward on the ball. Come on, lad. Gets it forward to Kike. Kike in the area. Gets his ninth of the season. You love to see that, too. It will be sad if one of Kike or Crosdale has to leave the club for financial reasons. That's what it's going to have to come down to at some point, I believe. But, you know, we do have players waiting in the wings. Onino is there. Jez Jezovic the second is there. They're ready to come onto the pitch and start scoring goals. So we've got a couple of young players as well in the under-19 and the B team that want to try and score goals. So we do have plenty of strikers coming through. And if we lose one of them... You know, it's not going to be the end of the world. Of course, we could always lose Raul Jr. as well. He's got that £6.5 million minimum fee release clause in his contract. Uh, if he... What? Anthony. Anthony. Oh, it's offside. It's disallowed. It's fine. Oh, we have been let off there so much. So much we've been let off there. I mean, Anthony, clearly, he just must have thought that... Uh, he just, he just must have thought it was offside to let it go anyway. But that was one of the most horrific goalkeeper mistakes I think I've ever seen in Football Manager. 
That was pretty poor, to be fair. Luckily for us, we've got away with that massively. But uh, University Mathia looking to come forward again as they get the ball out wide, looking to actually score a legitimate goal this time. They can't just yet as Crossdale on the ball. Hoofs it clear to Javi Vasquez next to him. Not quite hoofing it clear, is it? As he gets it into Gonzalez. Gonzalez to Shitty Gel. Shitty Gel hoofs it up to Kike. Kike, can he find someone? He finds Shitty Gel again. Nice passing manoeuvres to get forward as Crosdale finally gets put forward and gets his 10th of the season. 3-0 up before half-time. I think we've won this one. Start of the second half now, and it's University Mathia looking to come forward to try and get a good start to the second half. They had a terrible first half. They need a very quick response here if they want to get anything out of this game. But a good clearance from Brito there, and the ball forward to Rao Jr. could be offside. It's not, though. Rao Jr. does now get his 15th of the season. He's on 14 before the game. 15 now. You love to see it. How close to, he, how close to offside is he? I think he might be very offside. Like, really offside. Can we see a proper replay of that again? Let's get ready for it. Gonzalez. Oh, he's just played onside by this guy. Just played onside by that guy. I know the ball's in the air right now, but, you know, we've been further back before. So, he is onside. Fair play. The 4-0 scoreline gives us the three points, obviously, and puts us up to fourth in the table right now as things stand, which is fantastic. Not sure if other teams play later on in the day as well. We need to check that out as well, but... We are storming up the table, which is fantastic. Given the start we had, which was pretty poor, actually, uh, we lost like four games in a row or something like that. Uh, we've really bounced back and done phenomenally well as Taylor Cross there looking for his hat-trick, can't get it. Clearance, though, straight away from the Mathia keeper. Only goes as far as our players, as Brito now on the ball. Fires it forward to Raul Jr., who gets the fifth goal of the game for us. Our strikers are loving this today. Sometimes we absolutely batter everyone. Other times we get battered ourselves. It's a bit weird. We can't really keep things properly consistent. But today has been what... I've, I've just seen that our XG is less than one. Hold on a second here. Javi puts it forward to Kike, who gets the sixth goal, his second goal again. That might change our XG. But our XG is only just over one now that has gone over one it's now 1.04 our xg of 1.04 resulted in six goals so really we have been phenomenally lucky in this game um, and can we get more goals as crosdale heads it forward to absolutely no one unfortunately in the end but the keeper clears it only as far as a shitty jello pumps it forward towards no one again come on lads be a bit cleverer with your play and passes right now as uh, we don't want to concede here. Who's going to collect the loose ball? Himself. He's headed it on to himself. Why has no one gone on to collect that? I bet we're going to concede from this now, aren't we? Not quite, but we're still not in possession as Kike can't win it. But Crossdale can. Forward to Raul Jr. looking for his hat-trick. Gets his 7-0. What a result. I'm so pleased I decided to show you this game on camera. This is absolutely phenomenal. It just shows as well how... You know, we can lose 4-0 to the top of the table one week and then two or three weeks later, we can come back and win 7-0 against another team. It's absolutely phenomenal. Also, it does show just like how varied this division goal. Oh, we've conceded a goal. You hate to see it. Can't even keep a clean sheet. We're rubbish. A 10 rating for Raul, an 8.8 .8 for Martel Telecrostel, an 8.6 for Kike as well. Uh, we should have made substitutes earlier on. Uh, we're now five minutes from time, so there's no point doing it. But I must say... What an absolutely fantastic result today. Very pleased with how the boys have played, unless we concede another goal here. We haven't. To be fair, Mathia have come close in this game. They have come close. It's not like they've been, you know, had terrible shots and chances. They've even had a better... Ex right. I need, I need this to be explained a little bit. How have they got a better XG than us? I mean, surely if we've scored seven goals, the chances must have been decent enough. Like, I, I, this XG just seems bizarre to me. We'll take it, though. I'm not complaining. We'll take it. I, I love winning games. Martel, do you want to sign a new contract with us now after that? He, he still doesn't. Genuinely think we might lose him, you know? I wonder if the Spanish FA have been whispering in his ear and they're trying to get him to leave the club because they, they want us to fail. You know, they're going to offer him a lot of money. I don't know, the reverse shitty gel sort of thing. I've been surprised, actually. Shitty gel usually follows the money, doesn't he? But, you know, at this club, he, he stayed pretty loyal to us so far. I'm happy with that. The backroom staff have assessed the fitness and condition of the players upon returning to training. Have we just played through, like, winter break or something? What's going on? No, because winter break should be there, shouldn't it? So why have they just come back from training? We've also been drawn against Abar in the first round of the Copa del Rey. Uh, I believe we played them, like... If, hang, can we look at past meetings? I think we've played them last season. Yeah, we did. We lost 2-1. Mid-season. 
They just they just come back. I'm very confused by that that message. Why were they on mid-season break now? Although literally, if you look at that training thing in the in the news article, everyone's resting. Why are they resting? They've literally just got rest scheduled constantly. Why? Why are you resting? Reset. Okay, that that's we that's so weird. Maybe this is more stuff just forced upon us by Spain or, or something like that. We need to be having some words, I think. We need to really sit down with the Spanish authorities and, and have a word with them about this. Crosdale, though, has uh, he's come back from training or his winter break or whatever is on, and he's now injured for nine days to two weeks, so he will miss the next game. A little bit annoying because Alcoyano are a decent team, and obviously we want to try and score another seven goals past them, or a, a, any team, really. So that will come up next. I would do the A-bar game on camera, but we have bottled the massively in the past before you saw us playing last season on camera as well so i'm not really too fussed about doing that one for an episode we will lose that game as well they're a la liga side we're obviously not a la liga side oh no they're not a la liga side anymore they got relegated they're still third in the division above us but hmm okay crossdale got to come off for this one though let's bring jez jezovic on instead andre looking a little tired uh let's get him off for scott marshall for this one and swap him and Gonzalez over. Lopez also looking a little tired. So let's bring Jez Finley on at centre back. But other than that, let's go and stick with the team that we've got. So kick off upon us once again for the second time today. Um, I'm, I'm expecting this one to be a lot closer. They are just behind us in the table, Alcoyano. We're on 80, uh, 38 points right now as things stand. Uh, they're on 33. So they won't overtake us if they beat us. But obviously, we want to try and build a big gap as possible between us and the mid table. So if teams above us do start to slip up, then we can capitalise on that and hopefully teams below us won't capitalise on that. But his first half has flown by, not a single highlight. So after the seven goals we scored last game, you can almost guarantee this to just now be a nil-nil. A nil-nil wouldn't be a bad result to be fair, actually. Uh, it'd be a very decent result away from home to a team that probably are a little better than us. I think we are outperforming ourselves this season so far. Uh, I think the second half of the season will be a lot harder particularly after January I'm not planning on making any January signings other teams might improve a little bit so uh, I'm, uh, January might be a bit of a weird time for us and we usually don't do very well in January when we do play in Football Manager for whatever reason as we've nearly scored the goal we needed to get in front in that game Jez Finley with a huge what on earth was that that was a perfectly timed challenge don't you dare send him off what for what for well that kind of changes Everything, really, doesn't it? Uh, what we should do then, who's not played well anywhere, really? Uh, to be fair, Raul and Jez not playing particularly well. Let's get Jez off, all right, bring him at centre-back, and let's bring uh, Andre Schittigel on, who can play centre-back very capably, and I think we'll have to drop down to balanced and hope for a draw now. But that red card does look like it was going to be the only highlight of the game. So uh, don't expect much from this one, a nil-nil. Uh, and given that this game has gone by so quickly, and it is Christmas, let's do the A-bar game as well on camera. Let's do it. Oh no, not like this, not in the 88th minute. Look, we fought hard for a point here today. The first actual highlight of the game that's not gonna be a red card. Oh, Anthony Ward, thank you very much. So there we go, nil-nil. Uh, very, very quick game, that one. Uh, very different to the game we had just before it. Unlucky, boys, wasn't quite our day. I'm not quite sure how we can go from scoring seven goals one game to not having a single highlight go in our favour in the next game at all, but one of those football manager things. Jez is dismissed. Uh, I'm going to appeal the ban because I did not think that was a, a free kick or a red card worthy challenge. Two days off before the A-bar game as well, so what we should probably do is just go down here and training training rest everyone for one day so i think what we do is we stick to our usual brand and style of play against a bar let's not back down let's go balls to the wall for this one so jess finley comes off for lopez he's not suspended for this game because it's a cup game but lopez is still the better player so we'll bring him on ethan brito might swap over with eusebio monzo who is back from an injury now however brito has played relatively well. So we'll leave him on for this game and keep swapping out afterwards, I think. He deserves his chance, I think, really. Uh, Cipollina stays. Uh, Marshall and Gonzalez will swap over and Shitty Gel comes back on the pitch. Raul, Jez, Kike. We need Crosdale playing this one, but he's still injured, obviously. So let's swap Jez with Oninho for this one. See what he can do. Other than that, that's the team. Submit it. Let's try and beat Abar. So as kickoff is upon us here today, uh, potentially if things go well for us this season, 
we could be playing a bar in the league next season. I doubt that'll happen. I don't think we're going to finish in the top two this season. And I don't think we deserve to finish in the top two this season. We're not quite ready yet, I don't think, as an entire squad. Yes, we are outperforming ourselves a little bit. And, you know, if you get there, you deserve it. But I don't think if we got promoted this season, we'd be straight back down. Financially, we're not there. The Anthony Ward money will run out at some point next season. So if actually there was a time to go up, it might be now just to make sure we've got a bit of money for that first season to try and stay in that division. But just given that our stadium is so small, that's the biggest issue. We can't get enough people through the door to make any money. That's the biggest thing for us. And of course, sponsorship is absolutely terrible as well. So what we need to do is have a good cup run, actually. A good cup run would do amazing for us, but I don't think we're going to do a good cup run, particularly when teams as good as Abar are coming up against us in the first round. If we get a good cup run, we get some good recognition and obviously our reputation would increase, but the sponsors still probably wouldn't be interested in going for us. Although Oninio Jr. has just put us 1-0 up in this game. That could be crucial. Can't actually remember if there's any prize money involved in the Copa del Rey. Um, if there is, it's probably not all that much because I would have known about it by now. But, you know, I guess we get the gate receipts for this game, which is good. Not sure if it's split gate receipts like in the UK in the FA Cup. Uh, if a non-league team goes to play, you know, in the pre a Premier League team, like, I don't know, Sutton play against Man United, um, then f the, the gate receipts get split in half. So Sutton get half, Man United get half. So if we went to, like, you know, Barcelona, 100,000 people sit in that stadium paying to watch us play. If that gets split 50-50, that's a lot of money for us. I just don't think it operates like that in Spain, unfortunately. is That's a good attempt from Abar to chip Anthony Wall, but he was not falling for that one. To be fair, we are doing phenomenally well. Uh, Abar still looking to come forward towards the end of the game and still not finding that shot on target that they need yet. We are still winning as it stands. We're going to make some changes out there to some tired faces. Cipollina being one of them. Uh, Tomic will come on for him. Gonzalez will come off for Scott Marshall. And at the back, we are looking a little shaky. Javi Vazquez, swap with Javier, and then swap with Kian Ronan. Let's try that. 25 minutes or so to play in this game. We could be about to pull off a huge cup upset by beating Abar. Again, the XG heavily in Abar's favour, and yet we're the team that are winning. This season has had a lot of luck in it by the looks of things. A lot of luck in it. A lot of the games we do win, we are behind in the XG. We just have some very good strikers on the pitch. You know where the back of the net is and know how to put it in there at the tight angles that you know other strikers wouldn't be able to do it. With five minutes to go, I did not think we'd be winning this game in the cup. This could be huge for us as Zidane clears it out from the back. Obviously, it must be Zinedine Zidane's son, who is the goalkeeper. Lopez into Tomic, into Kian Ronan, into Scott Marshall. If we can get a second goal, that would be amazing. Into Shitty Gel, Shitty Gel in the area. Kike, Oninio, how has he not even got that on target? Hopefully, it won't matter as the clock ticks down and we... Oh, don't do it. Not like this. Not like this, please. Not like this. Good, they've hit the crossbar. I think that's the second or third time we've seen them hit the woodwork. But do we care? No, we don't. We've won the game. Beautiful. Twice they hit the woodwork. Twice Abar hit that. And yet we're the team that come away winning. Well, I tell you what, that is amazing. Hang on a second. Abar won the cup last season. Did they? What's, wait, wait, hang on, what's this about? Copa del Rey, past winner. What's this? Copa del Rey. History, past winners, Barca. So when did Abar win it? 22-23? Maybe, oh, maybe this is a bug in the game where it's telling me that Abar have won it this season. 23-24 uh, seasons this season. I think something's broken in the game here. That would have been mad, actually, if Abar had won the cup last season. That just must be a little bug in the game. When is the, the, the draw for the second round? Tomorrow. Let's do a draw, see who we get. £30,000 we've made from that as well. £30,000, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's not helped us out massively in overall budget, but it's, it's an extra £30,000 we wouldn't have got otherwise. Uh, the FA don't want to appeal Jez's bad. That's annoying. 
Is there prize money? Did we find out if there's prize money? Uh, there's no prize money. That's a bit annoying. If you win it, you get half a million pounds. That's the only prize money in the cup. Chipolina's got the flu. We'll send him home so he doesn't spread it to the rest of the squad. Although not really matters too much right now. We're on international or, or, or winter break. Whatever this is meant to be, I don't quite know. It's very, very weird what's happening in the game at the moment. But second round of the Copa del Rey. The Liga clubs come into it this time around. Uh, that's going to take a long time to do. Let's just press continue. We've been drawn against a team from our level of football, but in the other division. They're in the second division Pro B. And they're currently 14th in that division. It could be another win, you know. That comes up very shortly. Um, I don't think... I don't think we'll do that in an episode uh, just because it's not quite as, as, as dramatic and, and big as, of course, the, the A-bar game was. And we want to try and get through this season as well. Um, so we'll come back next time, probably around the, 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 the end of start of March, end of February sort of time. Um, but, of course, if we do get through that game, it might change. Thank you very much for watching today's episode, though. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. And of course, if you have done, drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Uh, I will see you on stream tomorrow. Obviously, if you're around for the stream, no video tomorrow. Back on Boxing Day uh, on the 26th for videos. Um, of course, have a very Merry Christmas, and I will see you all soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.